Hello, I am Beak Supreme, the uh, force behind the Beak Robotics YouTube channel, and <coughs> excuse me, Beak Robotics all together. I'm the guy that started up the idea. The guy, I mean, the the, the guy that started up the idea for to have an organization or entity or company, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully, you'll eventually grow into a company. My real name is Christian Noggle, and I'm 32 years old, <coughs> and, you know, I came up with Beaklebotics because I wanted a name that sounded both stupid and cool at the same time. Alright, <coughs> you got, excuse me, I got a little bit of a cold. Um, the idea for Beaklebotics goes back years, at least six years, five to six years. Um, back in late 2005 when I wanted to make a video game, especially all through 2006, uh, the goal was always to make arcade games as classic two-dimensional sprite style. Um, it's just been a work in progress and uh, last year, about a year ago, <coughs> excuse me, I, um, took some more, you know, uh, approaches toward it, and actually started writing a video game or computer game demo uh, using the Python programming language binded together with the SDL uh, application program interface framework, all that kind of stuff. And it was kind of cool, but, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about it. I didn't get a whole lot done. Still got aspirations. Still got my Raspberry Pi. Model B that will hopefully eventually become my arcade board. And there's a computer in the background. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, it's got a blue light on there. That was the computer that I was hoping to use for um, my arcade machine. This was five years ago, back in 2007. But since then, the Raspberry Pi has become a uh, better, <coughs> better suited. Alright, I got these ideas, and for some reason, people seem to think that I'm some kind of genius, even though I'm not. I'm not special, because I believe anybody can do what I do, it's just that they won't do it. And that's what differentiates me from other people. Um, I'm, I just got this curiosity about how stuff works. So I got a little project. <coughs> okay. I got my SNES Pi Box project, and, um... Let's bring you up to speed on this kind of stuff. Alright, last month, which is September 2012, I was working on my um, SNES Pi box, and it, it's fully functional uh, so far as the Raspberry Pi is concerned. There, this is ex uh, exclusively for ventilation. This inadvertently functions as ventilation here for the SD card slot and power connector. Um, the, this big hole here is for uh, USB and Ethernet. <coughs> this hole here is for HDMI. Um, the Raspberry Pi sets in here, occupies about this space right here, this region here. And it's all glow in the dark paint. And uh, I've had these ideas. And really, honestly, in terms of money wise, I should just bought a Raspberry Pi box off of uh, the internet because that'd only be out about 20 bucks. I've sunk a bunch of money into this project so far. <coughs> um, I got a working Pi box, but you know it's a little bit kind of ugly. The, these these um, stickers got a little bit, you know, um, something stuck to them, tape stuck to them, and torn a little bit. Uh, these little cats on here, they glow. All this glows. I need to put ultraviolet lights. I spent all kind of money. Um, on this. I was, um, now, I'm, I'm just going to have to grab real quick, just to bring you up to speed. I'm going to have to grab my first attempt at a pie box. <clears throat> Alright, I got it.
this right here is my very first attempt at a uh, Raspberry Pi box made from Super Nintendo cartridges. As you can see, obviously it is not finished. That's a very poor design. And there was a lot that I did not understand. And this is going to be the top. This is three Super Nintendo cartridges stacked high, which I believe I may go back to that. I uh, just cut cartridges and basically epoxied them back together and did a really crappy job and spent a bunch of money in epoxy and I can make this work it's just gonna be ugly and this is my very first attempt this was what was going on during August of 2012 okay this is my very first attempt now, obviously, I came up with different concepts and ideas on this one here. This is only two Super Nintendo cartridges stacked high. And I've had more success. It's still a little bit ugly, but it's fully functional. Uh, and it works. And these ideas I came up with myself. I just sit here in my apartment, cut plastic, you know, like hot glue stuff together. And the things I learned from this one, this is my second attempt. This one was being made during September of 2012. Now, right now, it's October 20th, 2012. I haven't got a whole lot done. I started this one on uh, October 6th, so it's two weeks ago. I just <clears throat> am being distracted by other things. This one will be a much better attempt. This is a better mounting system for the Raspberry Pi. And there's still even more improvements I've, I could think of. But this is so far October's um, attempt. And the Pi sits in here. And all i got to do is stack three of these. You know, see, this is just one complete level. And i I just got to do this three times. Well, basically, this is the very bottom. Raspberry Pi mounts on here. All i got to do is take another um, Super Nintendo game cartridge. Super Nintendo game cartridge. Just got to take it. And, um... All I gotta do is take um, this cartridge, cut out this whole section, that whole section, stack it up on this, mount it, you know, whether it's glue, epoxy, whatever. And then <coughs> take yet another one of these <coughs> and um, yet another Super Nintendo cartridge. And then I'll cut out the bottom of this, and then just lay this on top of there. So it's going to be three Super Nintendo cartridges stacked. Now what I'm going to do is the Raspberry Pi will occupy two Super Nintendo cartridges because it works. That's what I did on um, my Pi box here. Two Super Nintendo cartridges. You see, and it works. Okay. Now. <coughs> The reason for the third one, third cartridge on type, on top, will contain the lighting system. Uh, now, that's what I'm working on right now in mid to late October. Well, right now it's October 20th, 2012. And I expect the entire lighting system to be self-contained within a cartridge. Um, all your connectors, all your lights, everything, maybe even a power supply, uh, battery, something like that. Or at least the jacks that will connect to uh, an external battery pack or just a AC wall adapter, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. <coughs> uh, I could wire up every LED and solder every individual LED, but, you know, I don't want to do that because, you know, these LEDs, they're, they call that the lens, and it's made of plastic. And, you know, it doesn't handle, um, it has a temperature limitation. And besides, I don't want to deal with all that solder. You know, it's got lead in it. Um, a lot of the time, uh, you you can't get silver solder. I mean, all the solder is going to have tin. But you know, it's just plus there's all the electricity used for the soldering iron. So there, and you know, it's just an ugly thing, and it's not easy to change and all that. It's just okay. So what it is, I go to Radio Shack. <coughs> I spend money on getting these things. This right here is a 40 pin IC socket for a 40 pin <coughs> dip um, uh, dual inline pin, I believe it is, dual inline pin, um, 
type of configuration. This is the type of socket you'd see on, um, I guess, like a Motorola 68000 mic uh, microprocessor, you know, like which was in the Sega Genesis and a lot of uh, arcade game machines back in the late 80s and early 1990s. So you take this as like a dollar or whatever. Okay, I forget, I forget the exact price. And you take this item, and what you can do <coughs> is you take your LEDs. And the LEDs you'll typically find are 5 millimeter diameter, 5 millimeter diameter, and they are T134 form factor, okay? And you can just plug them into these, uh, these pins on these sockets, and, uh, you can, uh, what else I get on here? Okay, you plug it in in there. And, of course, you can cut out the excess length. This here is a 2032, it's a CR2032 battery, lithium 3-volt. Take it here, and let's see if I get the voltage right. Yes, I did. Alright, and you just touch it to here, and you make contact. And this just proves, all this does is proves that you can get an electrical connection. I'm going to turn out the light here, and so the camera will be able to see. This LED is a... 405 nanometer LED. 405 nanometers is significant because it's the exact wavelength of Blu-ray. That's what makes it so interesting. Uh, you can see it's lit up now. And it's putting out light. Now, it's, you know, I can't account for full brightness because, you know, these, these LEDs go up to 4 volt. But, you see, nonetheless, it works. Um... <coughs> It just proves concept. Now, this LED, like I said, 405 nanometers, is known as long wave, long wave ultraviolet. Um, it's long enough wavelength that it's still kind of in the visible light spectrum, but it still puts out some ultraviolet light for an ultraviolet effect. Okay, you can use this type of socket if you want. Just run a whole row of these um, in the. Um, you know, you, you'll run these in the top of your pie box. You mount it like so, and 40 pans is probably enough. It's probably going to be good enough to make coverage and that sort of thing. Okay. Now up inside here, you'll have all the wires, and you can even have a battery, a little, um, little battery holder for this little coin cell battery, if that's what you want to power your items off of. Anyway, the whole lighting system is expected to be contained in here, and it'll be like like recessed lighting uh, that you see in buildings where they have the ceiling tiles and all that. I uh, plan on using popsicle sticks, <coughs> or what they call craft sticks, and to set it all up in here and to have everything all flush, and you'll hide the wire and all that. And then you'll have um, in here you have switches and maybe jacks for external power if that's the method that I want to do. All right. Now, using this um, the dip socket is one of the ways in which to run all these LEDs and kind of do it like track lighting or whatever. Now, to connect the uh, obviously you can plug in all the LEDs here. Now, to do uh, the the wiring, the wiring I, I could solder all these if I wanted to. I mean, that's a possibility. But if I didn't want to solder, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what a jumper is simply a piece of metal around plastic and it's just used to connect these kind of pins to bridge the gap. What I can do is put a jumper on this pin here and then on the other little hole in the jumper run a wire. So then the jumper becomes like a plug and I can plug all these in wire them all up that way. That's what I've been thinking about lately. <coughs> or uh, something I just thought of well yesterday on, the, uh, on October 19th 2012 is an easier way. Right here, 40-pin IDE cable, uh, typical for computers 10 to 15, even 20 years ago. You know, all through the 1990s and especially the early 2000s. Uh, you can probably still buy them, but you can find them, um, you know, at, at like old computer junk stores or whatever. They'll probably be dirt cheap. All right. And this is this functions as a socket and wiring all together. Uh, now if I wanted to, I could plug this into the IC socket here, um, 
and it plugs nicely into there. Okay? Now you just maybe hold it in place with some hot glue. That's an option. Now you can plug two of these sockets in here if you want to, two on each side, and use it to feed two sockets if you want to have that many lights. And um, you can you can do it that way. Okay, these ideas concepts. Or you can just use this as your whole big lighting track. And I will show you. Take your LED here, plug it into here. It, it fits fairly well. You know, doesn't come out. Uh, and this works best for the uh, five millimeter T134 or that type. Any of them that'll the lead should be all good. And you just find out what wires and pins and all that. And I just cut out two of these. And I will separate these wires. And um, this is just proof of concept kind of stuff. And just finding out what works. And I'm really thinking up these ideas because I'm coming through all these different ideas for efficiency purposes to mass produce and replicate these things. Because they're going to be handmade for right now. But i got to come up with an efficient way to do it. So, look what we got. Once again, the CR2032 battery, very common. It's in computers, it's in a lot of things. Um, and <clears throat> you can get them pretty cheap on the internet, anywhere from 50 cents on down to 20 cents maybe. You buy them in a store, you're paying, you're paying at least $2 for a battery. Alright, I'm going to show you when I uh, connect this up here. Um, here we go. Once again, it's the very same LED, 405 nanometers, which is long wave ultraviolet. Uh, the very same wavelength, therefore the very same color as Blu-ray. And here it works. If you can see that. And just using a lithium 2032 watch battery, well, a coin cell battery, you can call it a watch battery, whatever. Going through an IDE ribbon cable for a computer. Typically you plug up uh, hard drives, CD-ROM drives, DVD drives, whatever and just using it to hold the uh, LED in there and to connect power. And you see this could be my uh, idea for my lighting system. Now I ordered a fuck ton of LEDs yesterday, um, which was Friday, and <coughs> and well that's a pretty good amount. <coughs> I ordered 87, I believe it was 87 LEDs. I was going to order 75, but then I saw there's the orange LEDs there, and it's like, yeah, I really want those. Ordered a whole bunch of red, uh, orange, amber, yellow, green, um, like a like an aqua color, a, bl a blue, ultraviolet, white, the uh, the blinking color changing red, green, blue LEDs. I think I ordered some pink. Um, I ordered high flux, four pin. I ordered um, um, more like a cylindrical flat top because they have a wide viewing angle. They're they're very similar to the, these here, except they're flat top and they have a wider viewing angle. I ordered a bunch of this type, and <coughs> I'm going to use them in my SNES Pi projects. And um, I want to find out. I mean, Radio Shack has. Radio Shack has a lot of the parts that I'm looking for. It's just, you gotta kind of go in there and think about, you know, you go in there, I mean, it's kind of expensive, but you go in there and you, you get an idea and concept of how you want to do things, and maybe you buy a couple parts and build your prototype, and then you start looking for companies that are like wholesalers that sell stuff a lot cheaper. Uh, Radio Shack, they're, they're expensive on their LEDs. Um, you know, uh, anywhere from a, a, a dollar to like, four dollars for these LEDs. <clears throat> but they do have some good stuff there and it's it's good to get a start there. But now this other company which is called Leading LEDs I ordered, because their LEDs are as cheap as I believe five cents. Uh, the most expensive LEDs I ordered from there are 49 cents and that's for the ultraviolet and I believe for the um, the red, green, blue color changing. Um, the orange, I think they were eight or ten cents. Um, same thing for a lot of the other colors. 
anywhere from seven cents on up to twenty-five cents per LED. And I ordered a bunch of those. And if I start making more of these pie boxes and people want to buy them, I'll buy more LEDs and come up with more elaborate schemes and all this other kind of stuff. And really, I was just going to make a pie box like this one for myself for my Raspberry Pi. But then, you know, some other people started liking the idea. For some reason, they take enough interest that they tell me to keep them posted on Facebook about my ideas and concepts. I'm just this dude that's like, I guess I found my niche, you know what I'm saying? And people think this stuff is fascinating, and that's fine. I mean, it's educational, and this is keeping in spirit with what the Raspberry Pi is all about. Spreading knowledge and enlightening people and all that, and it's great. Uh, and I do this because there's no official way to mount the Raspberry Pi in an enclosure. Uh, that, that's not been done by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's all up to the end user and, and other entities to come up with a way on how to mount it inside a box or an enclosure. So we, you know, come up with all these ideas and all that. And I mean, I can, I can make a Pi box, a Raspberry Pi box, and it'll be fine and fully functional. And it's not all that expensive. But then I got these cool ideas for lighting and effects and all this other stuff. And people seem and, and themes and all that. And people seem to think it's cool, so maybe I'll just build these. You know, originally I was just gonna build one for myself, just one. And I came up with other di ideas, and it's like, well, maybe I should build some more for myself. And whichever different mood I feel like I'm in, I can just have a Raspberry Pi, you know, box for that. Um, <clears throat> but other people start taking interest, and I guess, you know friends of mine that have a Raspberry Pi or whatever, they might want to buy a box from me. The price is probably going to be at least $20, just the time and effort and the materials that go into this. Which, 20, bu 20 bucks is kind of roughly what a Raspberry Pi box costs anyway, the kind that are injection molded plastic or whatever, that are more basic. And, um, but these are handmade by me, Beak Supreme. And, you know, you're looking at Maybe on up to thirty dollars for one. It's got all the fancy lights in it. Maybe I'm just gonna have to see what kind of cost and go into it and that sort of thing. I'm gonna try to keep the cost under control. But if you want a really nice themed pie box, I mean, you might want to look at my designs and all that. All right. Well, I gotta wrap this video up. I am Beak Supreme, and this is for the Beaklebotics YouTube channel. That's Beaklebotics. And um, our slogan for Beeklebotics is Pet Some. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the slogan is Beeklebotics, Pet Some. And I'll have to work on logo and concept design and all kind of other stuff. So until next time, I'm Beak Supreme for the Beeklebotics YouTube channel, and you need to go pet some. Alright, enjoy.